right, it's time for Ask the Derm Board Certified Dermatologist, Dr. Billy Graff here with us this morning from uh, the Cosmetic Laser Dermatology. He's here to answer our skin questions. So let's go ahead and take a look at the first question. Let's see, so this patient emailed us and said that they religiously apply sunblock, but they're still getting, they only apply, it looks like in the morning, they're still getting sunburn. So obviously, you know, the key to sunblock applications, you need to apply it every couple of hours. So this patient sounds like in the morning she's putting it on, but then she's going out in the sun all day. And if she's in the water or just even just laying on the beach, you really have to apply every couple of hours. Now, some other uh, realistic strategies she could take is that she could wear, for example, like a rash guard. A lot of these rash guards have like a SPF of 50 mm -hmm. in them, and that would protect you even better than a sunblock would. Uh, wearing hats, sunglasses. It's really important to wear sunglasses when you're out in the sun because there are types of skin cancer. It's called choroidal melanoma that can affect the eye, eye and it's uh, almost universally fatal. So sunglasses are important as well. Sunglasses and sunscreen, and when we talk about sunscreen, obviously there's a couple different levels when it comes to SPF. Sure. I mean, is there, you know, sometimes it goes up to 75. I mean, is there at some point where that kind of becomes a moot point, I guess? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. You know, above 50, really there's diminishing returns. So if you can find a sunblock that's got an SPF of 50, anything above that's more of like kind of a marketing thing to try to get you to buy their sunblock. So I would just go with the 50 and you're fine. It blocks the overwhelming majority of the uh, sun's rays. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on to the second question. Sure. All right. Uh, so uh, we have Robert from Santee. He writes, with the amazing weather here in San Diego, I've been hiking quite a bit and I'm getting lots of mosquito bites. What can I do? I think we were just talking about mosquito bites. <laughs> yeah, I think we've all had mosquito bites. We know how annoying they are. You know, mosquitoes mm -hmm. are actually the number one cause as far as the, we'll call the, say the animal kingdom. They're the number one cause of death worldwide. Now, in the United States, we're very fortunate. We don't have a lot of the diseases that some other countries have associated with mosquitoes. But that being said, no one likes to get bit. So if you're going for a hike, uh, mosquitoes are going to be more active uh, in the early dawn and at dusk when the wind kind of calms mm -hmm. down and the sun's going down. Um, but some obvious strategies that you can take when you're out on a hike is, one, wear clothing that's protective. Mm -hmm. So long sleeves, long pants, uh, that sort of thing. The more active you are, uh, the more mosquitoes are attracted to you because we, when we get active, we breathe out sea, um, carbon monoxide uh -huh. and they're attracted to that. So um, that's gonna be hard to change if you're hiking. Uh, other things you can do is avoid brightly colored clothing. They seem to be more attracted to bright colors. And the other thing is before you go on your hike, don't spray any perfumes or things that have a lot of strong attract scent because that will attract them as well. All right, all right, yeah. thank you. Okay, let's go on to uh, the last question. We just moved here and my 10 year old son is doing a week long surf camp in Mission Beach. I'm nervous about stingrays. How can he avoid being stung? This is from Lisa in Escondido. You know, we should ask Brad this question because I think he has some experience with this. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I don't know where he is, but that'd be a great question for him. But uh, anyway, so what do you think? Have you ever surfed? Are you familiar with the ocean? Do you know a strategy that you could take to avoid um, being stung? Okay, let's talk about me and surf. I just stay out of the ocean because there's sharks, there's stingrays, all kinds of things that That's I would rather the, just not deal that with. That might be the best strategy. <laughs> but the simplest strategy, if you are going to go out surfing, is to make sure when you're walking out to the surf that you shuffle your feet. It's called the stingray shuffle uh -huh, uh -huh. okay so if you slide your feet across the sand the stingray it'll get disturbed and it'll swim away but if you actually step on the stingray that's when you get stung so apparently brad hasn't been doing the stingray shuffle because i know he's been stung a couple times <laughs> brad <laughs> poor brad all right so last question really really fast here i noticed my dog has a growth on her belly that's getting larger now i know you're not a veterinarian dr groff but mm. uh, can you help please explain this this is from sally from la jolla yeah well, let's take a look at the picture uh see now this Ooh. looks like the underbelly of a uh, her, her dog and you can mm -hmm. see this uh, raised growth and it looks like it's kind of ulcerated and open at the uh, top so skin cancers in dogs look a lot like skin cancers in people so the bottom line is if you have a growth that is not healing that is getting larger that looks strange to you if it's on your dog you need to have them seen because that right there is what's called a squamous cell carcinoma which is a type of skin cancer and it needs to be uh, cut yeah. out yeah all right Okay, well, to get in touch with Dr. Groff, the info is on your screen, and we've also linked it to our website. We thank you so much for joining us Great today, Great seeing you. Dr. Thank Groff. you so much. Right. Do we get to okay, ask Heather? Dr. Groff any questions? No. I think, <laughs> I think Brad had a question. Well, I just want to know if you get stung, what do you do? 
I think that's oh you know, that's a great question what do you do? oh yeah well hot water hot water actually uh, will kill the toxin that the stingray uh, places into the body when it stings you, so it actually uh, will neutralize that toxin. So hot water is right. That Brad's right about that. Did one. it work, Brad? For yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Dr. Brad Goff, can yeah, speak I, from experience. I've been here for eight years now, and I said just over the last couple of summers, I've been zapped like three times. For really? Sleep. Yeah. Just over the last couple of summers, but so he's now right you're used because to I just you get in the mode where you haven't been stung in a long time, and like Dr. Groff has seen, you got to shuffle. But I was walking out just you know, and yeah. I just yeah. step right on top, just like he said, zap, they get you, and yeah. then it slowly. It isn't a quick. It's a, a quick you're like oh i think i just got and then all of a sudden you know a little bit later it's, it's a slow progression i think doc but, but that toxin just takes effect and then all of a sudden you're like wow and then you soak yeah. your foot for like an hour you have to it takes a while for that to, you were in barney to, mode walking yeah, out yeah <laughs> <laughs> <Cool>. <laughs>